Ah, Valentine's Day, aka make single people feel bad day. A day where couples celebrate their love, a time of candies, cuddles, and most importantly, togetherness. These bonds and feelings are not only limited to humans, animals experience these same feelings of togetherness and cooperation, dating as far back as prehistory. One creature of the late Triassic period seems to be more open to cozying up to others in their burrows, and it wasn't limited to their own species. The trident-toothed proto-mammal, Tranaxodon. Tranaxodon was a genus of proto-mammal from the early and possibly late Triassic period. Initially found in South Africa, it has since been found as far away as Antarctica. Like the case for most Triassic animals, this distribution was likely due to the state of the Triassic geography. During this time, the continents were all joined together as a single landmass, a supercontinent called Pangaea. As you'd expect on a supercontinent, the distribution of animals was practically limitless with many animals speciating in different regions across Pangaea as they migrated across what would one day be the separate continents we know today. Among the animals that inhabited these regions of Pangaea were the proto-mammals. Proto-mammals, or stem mammals if you want to be scientific about it, were an ancient group of animals that evolved from reptiles and whose lineage would eventually lead to the evolution of traditional mammals. Although this group is often referred to as mammal-like reptiles in popular media, this group is no longer considered in the classification of reptile, instead falling more in line with that of mammals. They walk in evolutionarily gray area in terms of where they sit on the family tree. They're not quite reptiles, but they aren't true mammals either. Trinaxodon was one of these proto-mammals, specifically of the clade Cynodontia, or Cynodont for short. Cynodonts like Trinaxodon possess various characteristics that would eventually lead to true mammals. In fact, many consider Trinaxodon a transitional genus of stem mammal, showing more advanced characteristics that would be found in mammals that would later evolve. From a superficial standpoint, Trinaxodon really does bear a very close resemblance to a mammal, to the point where if you looked at it without even knowing, you'd think it was a mammal, resembling carnivoran mammals today like cats, otters, dogs, etc. And to an extent, it does bear traits that true mammals would inherit from stem mammal ancestors such as the presence of whiskers, skull structure and dentition, a high metabolism, the presence of a diaphragm, a secondary palate, and possibly fur. Although at the moment of making this video, the fur on stem mammals like cynodonts are more speculation and likelihood rather than solid evidence. The presence of pitted formania, which typically house whiskers, presents a strong likelihood that cynodonts like Trinaxodon had fur. That said, Trinaxodon, like all proto-mammals, was, in many ways, not a mammal. It lacked external ears, and it had more of a splayed gait like a reptile than that of a mammal. Although in the case of Trinaxodon, it can clearly be seen that this trait was slowly transitioning more to being up under the body, like a mammal, in comparison to other proto-mammals. This transition in posture might have something to do with an interesting behavioral adaptation, burrowing. Trinaxodon has been identified as a fossorial animal, or an animal that lives in a burrow, thanks to the numerous Trinaxodon burrows that have been discovered all throughout South Africa, with many of these burrows containing the remains of their former occupants after they perished, likely due to natural causes, cave-ins, flooding, or a combination of these factors. We can infer that Trinaxodon made these burrows based on three factors, their physical traits, the shape and structure of these burrows, and the positioning and the condition of these animals when they died. Trinaxodon possesses several traits for burrowing, such as the possession of whiskers. We know that Trinaxodon likely had whiskers based on the presence of pitted formania, which is typically found on mammals with whiskers. These whiskers could have been used as detection and sensation organs, allowing for navigation through tunnels and chambers. The second adaptation is its skeletal structure, possessing an elongated, flexible body that allowed for maneuvering through tunnels, along with a segmented spinal cord, allowing for more flexible movement and maneuverability adding to the ability to navigate through said tunnels. The nail in the coffin is to what extent this flexibility allows Trinaxodon to do, position its snout behind its hind limbs. While this may sound like nothing special, this is a trait that's normally found in animals that are adapted to live in small living quarters in order to conserve body heat. The next thing to look at is the shape of these burrows. The burrows are observed to consist of two sloping halves while chambers are large enough to occupy the cyanodont with the necessary space for shelter. Finally, the position of the Trinaxodon that are found in these burrows. 
These cynodonts are found in a relatively complete and resting position when unearthed and examined, indicating that at the very least, these animals were occupying these tunnels as living quarters and died while taking shelter in their homes, rather than being dragged there as prey or food items, with many Trinaxodon specimens having been found in said burrows. To add on to this, juvenile specimens have been uncovered having died together, indicating that the Trinaxodons fostered their pups in these dens, likely while the parents or parent was out foraging, providing shelter for the parents as well as their offspring. An interesting case showed that Trinaxodon's choice of roommates wasn't limited to their own species, but it allowed other animals to occupy their burrows as well. A study published in 2013 revealed the shocking discovery of a Trinaxodon cozying up to the most unusual roommate, an amphibian called Brumistega. Fossorial animals sharing living space isn't uncommon in the animal kingdom. Gopher tortoises and wombats are good examples, where they'll allow different animals to occupy different chambers and tunnels of their burrows. However, it's fascinating to find such a behavior dating back all the way to the Triassic. Based on the condition of the remains, the Brumisteca had apparently taken shelter in the Trinaxodon burrow while the Trinaxodon was still occupying the burrow, with the two sharing the living space until they were killed by flooding, huddled together in their final moments. So if you're ever feeling lonely on Valentine's Day, just remember, if your proto-mammalian ancestor can find companionship in an amphibian, Who's to say we all can't find companionship? After all, there's always someone for everyone.